myself is my inheritance, my prize, my food, my dream, my highest joy. Welcome back at Against the Flow TV show. Currently we're talking about the life of Moses, the deliverer of Egypt. This next section we're going to talk about there's going to be a throwdown. Moses, there's a confrontation with Pharaoh and Janus and Jambres, and Moses and Aaron go to Pharaoh one more time, and they ask him to let the people go. Moses throws down his staff, and it turns into a serpent. The sorcerers of Pharaoh have a staff, and their staff turns into a serpent too. But Moses' staff devours the serpents of Janus and Jambres and the sorcerers. This incident continues to harden Pharaoh's heart. Last time we talked about the sun has the ability to soften somebody's heart if you're humble, but also has the ability to harden somebody's heart if they're prideful. So the first 10 plagues of Moses, they start to descend on Egypt. Each time Moses approaches Pharaoh and asks him to free the slaves, Pharaoh's not having any of it and he rejects Moses' request. So the Lord gives the God of heaven, he's showing the Egyptians that he alone has the God the power over sun and earth. The plagues are directly attributed to gods that were represented in Egypt. The first plague is the water becomes blood. The Egyptians used to give offerings to the god of the Nile. The next plague is frogs. The frogs are released, they're in their houses and the Bible says it's in their beds and the frogs are even in their ovens. The next plague is lice, flies, the livestock dies, they have boils, hail, locust, darkness, and then we get to the last part, the death of the firstborn. The angel of death descends upon Egypt, and the firstborn of Egypt shall die. Moses warned Pharaoh of the impending doom that was coming. Pharaoh sees the consequences to his actions, and he still considers going through all this. He's seen nine plagues, all representative of the, gods of, Israel, of the gods of Egypt that they worship and the gods that they're supposed to worship. They never showed up to deliver the Egyptians. The Lord instructs Moses to take a lamb without spot or blemish. They are to kill it at twilight and take the blood of the lamb and put it on the doorposts of the house. We're going to go into a little bit to the Passover in Exodus chapter 12. The Lord tells Moses to put the blood on the doorpost and the angel of death will pass over that household. The blood is a sign that is instituted and this is the Lord's Passover. The Lord instructs future generations to keep the Passover as a memorial to him. A memorial is something that we go back to and we remember what God did. A memorial in somebody else's life can help you because if God did it for them, he can do it for you too. This is a beautiful testimony of the blood of Jesus. And in the New Testament, Jesus is the spotless lamb who shed his blood. And we must accept him as we put his blood on the doorpost of our hearts. And then we pass over from death to life in Jesus Christ. God tells Moses, have your feet ready, your sandals girded, because once the Pharaoh gives the word, you guys are out of here. God tells Moses and Aaron to gather the people and Pharaoh will release the children. They are to leave in haste and take all of the plunder of the Egyptians. They were in slavery for 400 years, and God tells them as a recompense to take the articles of gold. He says to take the articles of gold and silver and the Egyptians as, from the Egyptians as a spoil of their bondage in Egypt. The Israelites are estimated to be between 2 and 3 million people and are assembled, and they're ready to leave during the exodus in Egypt. All of a sudden, Pharaoh decides to change his mind, and he pursues the children of Israel with the intention of bringing them back. So God leads the people to the Red Sea. The Hebrews are bewildered, and they see Pharaoh's army behind them and the Red Sea in front of them. Sometimes we see obstacles. Somebody's chasing us, and there's an obstacle in front of us, and we don't know what to do. And we want to figure out what God's going to do. Gee, God, can't you tell me how you're going to work all this out? And he's like, no, because if you could figure me out, I wouldn't be God. This situation looks impossible. We serve a mighty God. So he puts a pillar of fire to block the Egyptians from pursuing them into the sea. The people begin to murmur, grumble, and complain against Moses. They're actually complaining against God. They prayed for all these hundreds of years and said, let us be free. Remember, 
when you prayed for that job. Remember when you prayed for that ministry. Remember when you prayed for that spouse. They start to mock Moses and they say, have you brought us out in the wilderness to die? And, they, and then they start saying, we had things better in Egypt. Really? This is what happens with the apostles. Peter gets discouraged because he sees Jesus being crucified. He says, I'm going fishing. Have you been resisting the temptation to go back to your former life? You can't do that. There's nothing back there for you. If we look at our circumstances, it's easier to blame somebody else than to take responsibility for our actions or to ask the Lord to do a miracle in our life. All these years they wanted to be free. Now they're free, but they let fear rule their minds. They wanted to go back where they thought it was comfortable. It was familiar, but it wasn't God's portion for their life. We see the Lord overthrow the entire army of Pharaoh, and the Lord does great things. If you go to Exodus chapter 15, the people sing a song and rejoice. However, this rejoicing is short-lived because the, mur the murmuring, grumbling, and complaining, they start it all up again against Moses. Once again, as their stomachs grumble, they look for food and water, and the people turn to Moses as their deliverer rather than the Lord. Moses begins to get frustrated, and he asks them why they are showing contempt for the Lord. Sometimes we look to our spiritual leaders, our pastors, Bible teachers, and we think we put them up on a pedestal, and we forget they're just people. If you want to see the Lord do a miracle in your life, ask him what he wants to do. He will talk to you. You're one of his children. He wants to have a relationship with you. Once again, God performs a miracle and tells Moses to speak to the rock, and water will flow from it. God provided water and manna from heaven for the entire 40 years of the journey that they were in the wilderness for the Hebrews. The Bible says that the Israelites' shoes never wore out, and God provided for their daily needs. We see God dictate to Moses the first five books of the law, and they cover the creation story, how the Hebrew slaves are delivered in the Exodus, the Ten Commandments in Leviticus, and the Chronicles of the Wandering in the Wilderness in the books of Numbers. These historical references are found in Deuteronomy, which is called the Second Law. In chapter 32, 51, Moses dies on Mount Nebo, but before he dies, God tells him he will not be permitted to enter the Promised Land because God trespass, Moses trespassed against God Almighty. Do you have a trespass in your life that you need to confess before God? That secret sin that's in your heart that you think nobody else sees? Do you really want something so significant to keep you from crossing into the promised land? We see that Joshua takes over for Moses and he leads the people in the promised land with Caleb. Out of the two to three million people that wandered in the wilderness, only two people entered the promised land? All those years of grumbling and complaining, we've all done it. God, why did you let this happen? God, why did you do this? God, you know, some, we forget the fact that we have choices we need to make. If we do not memorize the word and know what God's word says, we're not going to know God's will for our life. The Holy Spirit wants to talk to you talks to you all the time. Maybe he even talks to you in dreams and visions because the only time he can talk to you in a dream is because that's the only way he can get the message through to you. I just want to thank you for joining us for this study on Moses. There's other studies on our website. Thank you for joining us at Against the Flow TV show and I pray that we have ministered to you and you've learned it's time to go into the land and take it back. I'm addicted to the pleasure.